Hello, this is Billy Joe with Moon Goddess 114433. And this is another one of my pick a card readings. Yay! <laughs> I know. Joy, joy, joy. <laughs> okay, so this one we're focusing on fears and blocks to union. I know a lot of people have messaged me and wanted to to really know well, what what's causing me not to, to get into union with my divine counterpart and you know without doing a personal in-depth reading I really can't say for sure because these readings these pick cards are general but I do have one subscriber who did say you know hey will not you just go ahead and do a pick a card reading you know kind of give them some insights and maybe um, it'll resonate with some and um, you know that's a good idea so that's what we're doing and we have three decks here let me just I'm gonna move the camera so maybe you can see it them better okay <clears throat> for pile one we have the rose quartz For pile two, we have the fluorite. And pile three, we have the clear quartz. Okay. So if you need to stop and concentrate, you can pause the video for a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and set the camera down and get repositioned and then start on number one with the rose quartz. We're going to look into <clears throat> not just your counterpart's fears and blocks to union, but we're going to look at yours as well. Um, and I'm going to break it down into the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine, because whether you resonate, whether you're male or female, you can resonate with either energy, because we do carry both energies within ourselves. And it's just whichever one is more dominant at the time of this reading that you watch it. I do intend for my videos to be timeless. So we are starting with number one with the rose quartz. Okay. For the theme of y'all's relationship, we have blessed. Time for a nap. And new life. Okay. Can I arrange that? So you can see that. I'm sorry about all the jiggling. I've been going through camera stands like crazy. Okay. So for y'all's theme of y'all's relationship with these three cards, what I'm seeing is you've already put in all the work that you can do. You've already done everything that you can do. You've wished upon a star. You've done your manifesta manifestations. You've done your positive thinking. You've done everything that you can do. Now it's time for you to rest and leave it up to the universe. It's time just give it to source. Whether you give it to source or God, gods, whatever you call your, your divine. <clears throat> just give it up. Because it's already set in motion. And after you wake, see how fully refreshed she is. She's, she's let it go off her shoulders. You know, she's released all expectations, and it's not until then that new life can begin. Okay, let's look at the Divine Counterparts. For the Divine Masculine, we have the Magician. So this is a Divine Counterpart. The Divine Masculine is someone who is very well adept at manifesting things, um, making what he wants happen. The Divine Feminine, we have the Judgment card. So, 
what I get from this is no matter what happens, she always has a comeback. Like, even if she was to hit rock bottom, she's going to dust that shit off and get right back up. Okay. So let's look at some of the Divine Masculines, what he's, his issues. Okay. He has father issues, either from his childhood or from male authority figures, maybe um, big brothers, fathers, just the male figures in his life that he has issues with. Maybe he doesn't feel like he can meet their expectations. Um, maybe a very small few, I feel like a small few of them had abusive parental figures in their lives. Um, but for the majority, I feel like maybe they felt like they never could meet expectations of their parental figures. Um, and for some, there's also some that I'm getting... Um, like, if they was to move forward and start a family, do they know that they're going to be a good father figure? Because they just didn't have that person was absent in their life. They didn't have that example. And that's going to hit somebody hard. That message right there is just fixing to hit somebody hard. Okay. They have... And this goes with the ones that didn't have the parental figure in their life. They have attachment issues. They have a tendency to not want to let go. They're probably very codependent. As in, um, calling, if, if you go shopping with your, your family, your, your say, say the feminine goes out and she's shopping with her mom and sisters or she's out with her girlfriends and they're having a girl's night and he's texting and calling constantly. What are you doing? What are you doing? Got had jealousy issues, abandonment issues, um, rejection issues. And his fear, he has a fear. This is the Ten of Wands. With this deck, this represents a fear of his own temper. His own anger. He fears what he may do if he loses his temper. So, advice from Spirit. Um, and what he's learning through this relationship. Well, he's learning gratitude. He's learning to be grateful for the opportunity opportunity that he has with you. He's learning to um, adapt to circumstances and that he is worthy to have um, the people that he does have in his life. I don't know why I'm getting that, but I'm getting that. Um, so he's he's learning to be grateful. Worry. Um, and I'm feeling this goes with the attachment card because he's learning to worry less. He's learning to just release expectations. He's learning to release all that negative talk in his head. He's learning how to trust more and let go of this jealousy and possession and the clinginess. And for some of them, it's going to be a slow process. I feel that. For some of them, it's a slow process, but it is coming. It's, it's happening. It's... Um, for his anger issues, it says emotional release maybe his anger issues is because he doesn't know how to express emotion he keeps things pent up so advice from spirit is to is for him to learn how to emotionally release you know when he feels like crying 
He needs to cry. It's nothing. There's nothing weak in crying. If he wants to express love, there's nothing wrong with saying, I love you. Those are not, those are not signs of weakness. Those are signs of strength. When you hold and bottle in what you feel and letting it just build up, that's a sign of weakness. Not being able to express yourself, that is a sign of weakness. When you are angry, when you are upset and you are disappointed, it is good for you to voice it, for you to speak it, for you to learn how to open up that throat chakra and let it out. Not do it in an angry manner. Don't do it in a disruptive manner, but learn how to do it in a way that you can communicate. You know, this affected you this way, and this is why this affected you this way. So let's work on not doing these behaviors in the future. You know, so that way we can both come to an agreement. But when you just wait till everything builds up and then you explode, well, that's not conducive for anybody. Okay. Now for the Divine Feminine. Some of the issues she has in her life, we have karmic relationship. So I get that, <clears throat> because I get that she's had a lot of downfalls, she's had a lot of downfalls when it comes to karmic relationships. She keeps on wanting to find the one. But instead of finding her, her higher level soulmate or her twin flame, she ends up with these karmic relationships and they keep putting her through hell, repeatedly through hell. And this has been a cycle through many lifetimes. So with this, with her divine counterpart, her divine masculine, it's like she sees him as possibly just being another karmic relationship. It's like she's just waiting for the fuck up to come along. You know, when, you know, she's just sitting there waiting for, you know, the shoe to drop, the bomb, okay? door to romance um i see this is you know i asked for blockages and fears and this blockage is a door to romance because with this card what i'm seeing is this love these hearts okay usually when i see this card i'm seeing hearts flowing out but i'm seeing hearts trying to go in to a locked cage like she's not accepting the love that's being offered to her and she's shutting the doors on it. She's already got a locked cage. Now she's shutting the doors. And she's got the key inside with her. Because she's been through so much. She doesn't even want to try anymore. Her fears. She has the knave of chalices. She doesn't want to give love prematurely. So this is just moving too fast. And, um, I, I've been here before. This isn't going to end well. So, her advice from spirit. We have imagination. I embrace and nourish the creative aspect of my mind. Um, so with this card, what I'm actually getting is, um... Embrace new ideas. Embrace new ways of thinking to try and get past these blocks and these fears. Um, write your fears down in a journal to release them if you have to. Write them down and then at the bottom of the page, like if you're fixing to go on a date with your divine counterpart, and you're fearful just write that fear down and then at the bottom of the page say but this is not going to happen i release this fear and then close the book and put it up and go on your date freedom i possess the power and the free will to create my own happiness you do have the right to choose. And in your mind, you know, we create our own realities. If you want to continue to see love as an entrapment, 
well, it's going to be. But actually, you can choose to see it as a freedom. Freedom for happiness. Freedom for self-expression. Freedom of joy. Freedom to actually embrace life. And your advice for your fears. It says sexual energy. So baby, get out there and go have some sex. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, sex energy <clears throat> is different than just intercourse. Sexual energy can actually be very healing. And it starts in the womb for Divine Feminines. It is Divine... It, you know, Divine Feminine has... If she is, if especially if your gender is female, you do have womb energy. Our wombs have creative power. And you can use that creative power to manifest some major changes in your life. And some extreme healing. That... Your womb generates life. It creates life. You are a creative being. And instead of just allowing your, your womb to lay dormant, not in use, that energy, let it be a powerhouse. Let it build up and use it for your manifestation. Your divine masculine already knows how to manifest. It's time for you to rise up and use your manifestation from your sexual energy. And use that for your healing. Okay, y'all, With that chose the Rose Quartz with deck number one. I hope that resonated with you. Um, if you do need a more in-depth personal reading, because remember this is general, um, just, just hit me up. I'm at moongoddess114433 at gmail.com. And we will get you booked. I am moving on to those that picked deck two. And y'all, I, I keep getting all kinds of comments about music. I just changed it. I have to have something in the background. Um, that just helps me concentrate. Um, personally, I don't really listen to music. I listen to frequencies because it helps with your vibration. And but I don't have a way that I can listen to frequencies while I'm doing a reading. So my choice, the only choices I have to listen to is there's a TV in here and it plays like music stations. And I'm very limited on what stations. So first I was like, okay, we'll go with some love. It says love songs. We'll play that. And then I had all kinds of people ask me, what song is that? And what song is that? I have no clue. And then I'd have some people saying, that music is distracting. Or that music is annoying. Okay, well, you know what? I believe it's annoying because I get too many questions about it. So now I'm just going with some kind of soundscapes in the background. And hopefully... I don't get too many questions from that because I don't know what it is. So, that is that. <laughs> okay, for those that picked deck two with the fluorite. I love the fluorite because it's got, look, it's got the blues and the purple. And if you hold it up to the light, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, anyways, moving on. For your relationship, we have chaos and conflict. Treasure Island. And by the book. Okay. So what I'm getting from this, if you see this, look. Okay, let me just move the camera for a little bit. Do you see that? They're all headed in a single file line going to the left, to the left. I'm not going to sing because I don't sing and I don't know the words, but I really want to say all your shit is in a box to the left. 
if y'all keep trying to conform to everyone else's relationship, yeah, all your shit's gonna be in a box to the left. Just grab your shit and go. Because your relationship ain't like everybody else's relationship. Quit trying to conform. Okay. Now. Look. When you try to be like everybody else, eventually all that paint's going to come off because here you are trying to look like a giraffe and you're a zebra. And just go swimming off on your own island. Be your own. Be Your relationship between A and B and C can butt the fuck out. Because your your relationship isn't going to look like Bobby and Sue's or Harry Met Sally or, you know, Pretty Woman. Your love story is your own love story. What you can handle, maybe someone else can't handle in their relationship. What they can handle in their relationship, maybe you can't handle in yours. So, what I'm what Spirits told me to tell you is, quit taking advice from outsiders. If you have problems with your divine counterpart, y'all take it to each other. Don't talk about each other to other people. Because them other people aren't relevant. They're not important. It's just y'all too, boo. Okay, for the divine counterparts. Divine Masculine, we have the Queen of Swords. Now, I'm just going to cut this right now and tell you, it doesn't matter if the Divine Masculine is male or female. When I pull a card and it says, if it says Queen or King, those are the energies. It's not saying the Divine Masculine is <clears throat> a male or female or heterosexual or homosexual or nothing like that. It is the energies only. The Divine Masculine can be a male. The Divine Masculine can be a female. These relationships can be male-female. There can be male-male. There can be female-female. The universe does not discriminate. So we're going to get that clear right now. Does not discriminate. Um... Discrimination for gender, for race, for um, sexual orientation. All those discriminations are placed on us by societal views and, and opinions. Those are programs that's placed on you. And guess what? You can download uh, frequencies from YouTube that you can listen to to help deprogram yourself. Better yet, the best way to deprogram is to just break free from the matrix altogether. Like, stop watching TV, stop listening to mainstream music, and just stop. So for the masculine, we have Queen of Swords. For the feminine, we have Knight of Coins. So I... For the queen of swords, for the masculine, what I'm saying, this is someone who is quite logical, very intelligent, um, and very good at analytical, probably very good at mind games, very good at games in, you know, like probably word puzzles and um, Sudoku, however you say that word. <laughs> Just like intelligent games, IQ games, they're really good. They're very intelligent. They're very good at that kind of stuff. Um, swords, I will mention swords, are air signs. So this person may have some air in their chart. That is like Gemini, Libra, Libra Aquarius. They don't. It doesn't have to be their sun. It could be their, in their moon, rising, or Venus. And they may not have it in there at all. They just may have um, characteristics of this in their personality. 
the knight of coins so this divine feminine is someone who's a little bit slower moving she likes to take her time she's like in my mind i'm seeing um like i had a co-worker one time that she moved really slow and um she moved slow like a southern belle you know she was going to take her time and move real slow and that kind of reminds me of this she's like she's gonna make sure she does things correctly and um very down to earth very grounded yeah Pro may like plants may like to garden may like to smell the roses or ferns i don't know why ferns just kind of stuck in my head but someone out there likes ferns the green plants okay and trees someone likes trees okay <laughs> so for the divine masculine let's see what he's got going on for his fears and blockages so first we have unrequited love so this divine masculine has probably went through past relationships but I'm specifically picking up that there's been one specific relationship in this divine masculine's life that um, he gave his all to and it was not reciprocated he doesn't want to make that mistake again he, and he still um, he still hurts from that indecision he may be one of these types that's like, if you ask where you want to go out to eat, he's like, I don't care, it's wherever you want to go. And you could be going down the main strip and be like, okay, well, there's a Hardee's. Uh, I don't want that. Okay, well, there's, you know, Casa Brava. No, I don't think I want Mexican today. And then you can say, oh, well, look, there's, you know, there's the steakhouse. No, I don't think I want steak. And you can go down the whole strip and name every single place. And they've declined every single one. And they'll be like, I'm so hungry. I just don't know what I want. You pick. But then when you pick, they don't want it. So there's constant indecision with this person. What's one of their fears? Well, we have the death card. They fear change. Is like they fear change so bad like even if the change is for improvement it's they will buck up against it they are set in their ways so advice from spirit things they're learning blessings and lessons so we have happiness says, I am aware that being happy means that I am on the right path. So, with this happiness card, what I'm getting is, for happiness, he's going to have to release that unrequited love. And realize that happiness begins within himself. Loving himself. Um... He's worthy, even if the other person didn't see him as such. He's worthy of love. It was the other person who didn't see that. It's not him. And just because the other person didn't... Their opinion is their opinion. He needs to realize that he is a divine masculine. He is magnificent. He is somebody. He is powerful. He is amazing. And he's got all this love to give. And it leads to his happiness. And he is worthy to be loved in return. And then we have the love card. I commit to the practice of seeing the good in all things. So, I'm getting to point this out, okay, with this indecision card. 
So you see someone in the indecision card that has two different paths to choose from. They can't decide which path to choose from. But with the love card we see, it doesn't matter what choice you make. All paths lead to the same destination. Some paths just may take longer than others. But whatever you choose, it, che che it leads to the same place. Learning self-love. And learning how to give love. And advice from Spirit on how to heal from the death card, the fear of change. This is creativity. So this Divine Masculine needs to get in balance with his Divine Feminine self energy inside himself. I don't mean his counterpart. I'm talking it within ourselves. Like for me, example, I have the energy of the Feminine and energy of the Masculine within myself. And I have to keep it balanced. If I don't, I become like my masculine energy will come too, too much in the forefront. And that's when I become bossy and, and I'm too gung-ho to get things done. And I take on all the activities and because I'm not a procrastinator. So I'm going to just jump in all hands on deck and get things done. But then the Divine Masculine energy is supposed to be receptive energy. So this person is not balanced with their receptive energy. And to do that, he needs to be more creative. He needs to sit down and maybe try to draw, paint, um, play some music, um, write in a journal. Um, play a puzzle do a puzzle if he likes to play puzzles whatever his creativity is that's in him he needs to do some more of that and let it flow and that that's what would be healing for him okay let's move this over a little bit we will get to the divine feminine so the divine feminine we have communal living so this is someone who's maybe possibly I'm getting that the Divine Feminine may have a lot of, probably a big family. I'm getting a big family that you really don't have your own space. There's lots of, like, if you have lots of siblings, there's lots of hand-me-downs. You don't really have your own stuff. Um, maybe you have to share a bedroom, a bathroom. Um, this, and for a small few, I'm getting the there's a small few that maybe live in even maybe has spent a lot of time in jail or prison and some maybe like homeless shelters where you you have absolutely no privacy and there's even some that it's just that you live in apartment buildings those are all different types of communal living, but for the majority of this this section with with the this um, pick a two pick two <laughs> okay with this this divine feminine with this who picked deck two uh, the majority of these actually um, it's just they come from a big family. I'm hearing loud, especially during the holidays and when they're all together. It's like really loud and um, this wonderful, I guess you get this wonderful warm feeling. But sometimes it can be kind of aggravating with the no privacy. <laughs> then you have second chakra, Archangel Ariel. The second chakra has to do the sacral. And that is where our pleasure center is, our sex drive, our creativity. So someone has a blockage in their sacral chakra, a fear, 
the Eight of Swords. This person, um, see, she has a chain around her throat, and then she has these um, this web connected to her head, like bolted into her head. She's chained to the negative thoughts inside of her head. It's like they're driving her crazy. So, Spirit's advice for this Divine Feminine, uh, and let's see, we have Patience. I accept that everything happens in Divine Order. So, what I'm getting is, is like, she's, she's, she's usually a very patient person, but... She's like so ready to be away from everyone else that she just wants to jump at the word go. She's just ready to go. She's ready to get on her horse and ride off. Even if that horse is a motorcycle. Then we have the death card. I am learning that endings are merely beginnings. With this, okay. This is not for everybody. Um, I'm getting that there are at least one of you, maybe two or three, but um, now remember this is general. Some of my readings, thousands and thousands of people watch. Some of our readings, less than a hundred people watch. But there is someone out there who has suffered, and this goes with their sacral chakra, they have suffered some type of sexual abuse and when you when you go through a trauma like that it does feel like you've suffered a death it feels like your self-esteem has been murdered your your worthiness has been butchered And you feel like you are absolutely dying on the inside and you get stuck inside your own nightmare repeating over and over and over again. And it's like you're surrounded by people who love you but you just can't. They don't understand. They don't know what you're going through. You can pretend all day long. And they think, they're going to look at you and think, Oh, look, she's doing so good. And she, you're really not. But Spirit says that each day is a new beginning for you. Each day is a new blessing, a new chance for cleansing and healing. And you are on this journey for healing. And you need to know that you are worthy, you are beautiful, you are magnificent, you are so loved and so amazing. And you have so much to give to the world. From what you've suffered can be transmuted into something beautiful to teach the world. And for your healing, we have the growth card. 
So you are growing. You are going through growth. It's just going by slowly. Okay, those foot picked deck number two. I hope this resonated. If you need a personal in-depth reading or um, a healing guided meditation, just shoot me an email and um, we will get in touch. My email is moongoddess114433 at gmail.com. And I am moving on to deck three. For those of you who picked the clear quartz, the theme of your relationship, we have loyal heart. Observer. This is so cute, y'all. And Yang. <clears throat> okay. This is so cute. I've got to let y'all look at this, what I'm seeing. Okay. So, you got the, the divine masculine, divine feminine here, right? And it's like, they're so in love. Y'all are just so in love. And it's like, he's looking at her like... I'm waiting for you to be ready. I'm waiting. Like, like if I ask, is she gonna is she gonna accept me? And she's looking back at him like, he better make a move before I make the move. Like, you're both waiting on each other to make the move. You're both waiting on each other to make the move. And then. Not only are you looking back at each other, but it's like, look at this one, this fox looking at this moon. Like, you're both watching each other intently. You're watching each other's social media. You're watching um, your phones, looking to see if they're going to call, if they're going to text. It's like you're watching their movements to see... Oh wow, are they are they fixing to ask me? Are they gonna ask me? Are they gonna ask me? When is it gonna happen? When is it gonna happen? And the reason why I know you're waiting for activity because you have the yang card. That's the masculine energy. So you're both waiting for the other one to move. <laughs> That's so funny. You're both waiting for the other one to move. That's cute. That's just so cute. Okay. So, let's look at the counterparts in this, this deck. So, the masculine has the page of wands. And the feminine has the page of swords. So, that pretty much explains it. Y'all... <laughs> Neither one of y'all has grown up into king energy, king or queen energy. Y'all's both playing like pages. Y'all's both um, kind of... <laughs> like you're both too timid to, to step up and step up to the plate. And now the page of wands, wands are very passionate um, suits. Wands are usually, they can have... Um, like wands are usually, let's see, they're fiery, they're passionate. If we're talking about astrological signs, we're talking Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, which could be sun, moon, rising, Venus, and, um, doesn't have to be, they could just have those element, you know, that characteristics in their chart, but, um, the masculine with this page of wands is like, um... Like, he wants to approach the Divine Feminine, but the way he's doing it is is with his sex drive. 
And then you have the Page of Swords for the Divine Feminine. So that, of course, again, swords are the air sign, which is um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And doesn't have to be sun, moon, rising, Venus. It can just be um, characteristics. Uh, someone who very good with communication. She's probably saying, hey, hey, hold up, boy. Hold up with that stick. Let's, can we talk about it first? Can we build up a relationship first? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Do we need more clarity? So, it's like he got his stick in his hand. She's like, look, now you can hold your stick, but I got these two, I got these two uh, knives here. You don't get your stick too close to my knives. <laughs> but y'all are both in the page energy. Like, y'all are both waiting for the other one to step up into the king energy. So, for the divine masculine. I'm sorry, y'all saw this this energy. Y'all are just so cute. Okay. For the Divine Masculine, we have spirituality and religion. So this the Divine Masculine um, may... I'm getting two different scenarios, okay? Um, for some, they fear... Um, traditional commitment um, like marriage for others there are some others that was like raised with um, raised in the church raised with strict 